Back again, part two. Let's finish this Banshee. Hello, and thank you for tuning into this very special sequel. Today, we're painting that Banshee's body that resides on top of the base. Walking through uh, multiple techniques, talking a little color theory, spinning this whole thing together. Not much else to say that the, the brush can't describe, so let's get into it. No, 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 no. Oh, hey there. Let's work on this Banshee. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is go through and lay down a wet blended base coat on all these areas. Uh, let's take a look at the colors. So, a little out of frame, but whatever. Uh, what I've given myself basically are some, some cold and swampy tones. Of course, I have the, the warm options to put some emphasis on the lantern, as well as the eyes. But I'll have uh, cold shadows and then kind of swampier green highlights, maybe moving into a touch of that, that ivory in there. Um, I've given myself some options. I may not use them all, but a little bit of touch and go action is always what the doctor ordered. I'll be using this um, zenithal base coat as my guide. It's, um, it'll all be covered in the end, but it is helping to ingrain this light situation. So we'll take a little bit of our battle dress green. I'll uh, swipe some coal black into it. And it may not look like it, but these layers, just one simple coat of paint is going to still have some transparency to it. But again, thanks to this black and white base coat, it's going to help my tones uh, find their proper place. In this crazy world and I'm looking at things in a more general sense um, not getting hung up on every fold in the fabric I will make those more detailed later for now I'm just looking at all the uh, the general shapes I've got to remember that I want to emphasize a darker atmosphere in this model so having very small portions of my brighter tones and larger Midtone and shadow areas will give me that look. So I have a bit of this coal black in place. I'll even take some just pure black, blend that into the recesses, making sure not to completely cover all that coal black up. You can see it's it's giving me some good amount of depth here. For her skin tone, I wanted to maintain this, well, dead, and, and also a pale look. Um, so I think what I'll go with here is some white. I'll take some of this dark blue and red, sort of mix up a sickly purple tone, and I'll be wet blending the white into that. Use uh, very small portions again. I'll even take some of that off of my brush and just use it to blend. And yeah, just carry that up across her arms, her chest, all across the face. And then on any raised areas or upward facing angles, wet bling some white in there. I want it to mix down though, I don't want the pure white to show. I want to save that for my final highlight because I can't get any brighter than that. So I'll make sure all of this is filtered down into just a, another shade of, of purple, sickly purple. The hair will get the same treatment. I'm just gonna mix up a gray. It's kind of a lighter to mid gray. Try to get to match the color of my palette paper so no one can see that it's there. That'll be good. But yeah, we'll just sweep that into the crevices and then the upper area will receive more white. I want the hair to be pale as well, but I want it to break away from the skin, so I'm just basing it in a plain old gray. We'll also take care of that lantern area. I'll just throw down some red. And I can bring it out a bit, why not? Who knows, this may get covered 
covered up later on down the line, but I just want to get my colors in place to see how things look. And we'll take a little hint of that red and throw it over the eyes as well. There. Getting a rough idea. I'll have to pull out some uh, metallic tone and paint up that lantern as well. We'll just do a bare silver. Now that I have the general picture in place, I can start laying down some highlights. Go back to that uh, brightest green I used on the dress, and now I'll start to bring out some of the uh, folds, wrinkles, edges of these tattered rags. Just like so. And let's mix a little bit of white into that. See how that suits our purposes. Start pulling out some of these smaller edges, adding to the uh, highlights as I'm picking out these wrinkles and, and such. That's kind of setting the area for where I'll come back in with my brighter tones. Put a little emphasis on those hips. Top of the stomach is protruding a bit. Yeah, just very gently going along these edges, making it look ragged, being sure to pull out every bit of texture on this lovely sculpt. Have to do some blending here and there, and maybe pull some more shadows into some specific areas. Is this area being under the uh, slight overhang on a bit more of a shadow on that but I'm just going through and kind of more uh, closely rendering everything all those uh, wet blended kind of loose gradients that I laid down I'm gonna go and clean all that up her skin is also going to need something a little bit extra um, let's try Throwing a little bit of this maroon tone into some of the crevices. I just wanted to look a, a little more undead. A little, you know, a little more variety in the uh, this random kind of patchy, rotted zombie slash ghost flesh. So make her look, you know, a little more juicy on the interior as corpses tend to be. I'll just thin the paint down, let gravity do the work for me. I'll drop it in to the depths. Now we'll see when I start pulling a highlight back out and kind of corral any of that red paint wherever it kind of float around. I'll, I'll pick out some of these finer details again to pull them out of that soupy mess. Just a little bit of controlled chaos. Uh, pull out all these individual tendons and sinews. The hair, I'll go in with pure white, and wherever there's a bend or a bow, I'll just try to pick out a little shine. You know, hair is kind of a, it's a more reflective material than, say, her ragged cloak or her dead flesh. So, we want to make sure our peaks are nice and sharp. So the light will gather on these bends much more uh, densely or strongly strong light and there she sits after a little bit of action I want to quickly just uh, sweep a shadow onto the metallic area just shade that in real quick almost did it off camera but I don't want to keep any secrets from you friend so we'll even include the boring part. All right. So it's time for some washes. I've given myself some dark tones, some flesh wash, military shader. Thanks, Army Painter. Um, so for the dress, I'll combine some of that military shader. It's a deep green. Throw a little bit of uh, black in there, touch of water, 
and we'll just glaze this all over apply a nice even coat working against that wet edge so I don't get any strange tide marks make sure to push that into every little crevice as well the hair put a very uh, thin down black wash we'll see we'll see how this turns out um, kind of riding on the fact that she's undead and the hair can be kind of gross and stringy so maybe a little risky just throwing this black wash over something that you'd ordinarily want to be smooth like hair but it can uh, work to our advantage in the case of this banshee push that into all the crevices as well and finally to complete the round of washes we'll throw a little flesh wash on top of her gross purple skin just kind of seeing what happens again working with those transparencies the working with the subtleties pretty happy where with it, what this uh, skin is becoming it's kind of the fun of doing a single miniature project you can experiment a little bit and not have to worry about uh, repeating the process of course if you do want to repeat the process you might want to record a tutorial video here she stands after the wash or floats whatever she's hanging out having a blast screaming her head off um, so let's talk about the hair the wash did something it does not look complete though so what I want to do is take a very diluted amount of black paint and just highlight some of the crevices or main chunks of hair it kind of splits off into these uh, different pieces but I want to provide a little more separation there you know, as, as well as uh, where it's touching down on her scalp I want a faint black line to uh, break up the forehead from the scalp let's take a look around the model as well there may be some areas I'd like to add some black lines to the wash will help but nothing wrong with going back and correcting things a little bit you know it's not a magical potion that's just going to fix everything or maybe I'm just picky either way it's all about the process and this seems fitting I'm liking what's happening <clears throat> I should probably drop a nice black line right in here kind of separating her dress from her collarbone and bicep here not bad so I'll have a little bit of, of work to do on the hair that won't be done in one single layer sweep that in place but I can start adding some final highlights I also would like to add just a touch of a rusty tone in the form of some bloodstone to add that to the metal on the lantern to do that in a, a few layers just get it to build up randomly so now I can go through and start adding some final highlights the hair will take work but I'll get back to that as it slowly dries kinda of going back to my original highlight color for the dress but going just one more stage brighter and applying my highlights in even smaller amounts just the uh, tiny dots and slashes level here in some areas I want to blend very thinly some of these more broad facings like her hip yeah we'll pick out all the uh, frays and tatters on the dress touching very very lightly I could spend a while on that, and I will. Um, let's also move up to the pure white, and I can 
once again start highlighting her skin same approach as the dress you know I, I really want to maintain this ragged texture that she has in the sculpt she looks suitably waterlogged and upset and I don't want my paint to get in the way of that I want to enhance it in fact Just paying attention to these upward facing angles and pulling out all these wonderful textures. Man, I love Rackham sculpts. And we'll put a little touch down on her tentacles. I can apply these highlights in kind of a series of thin lines. I like this uh, wrinkly texture going on, so I just want to add to that with my brush strokes. And we'll bring out her teeth. So yeah, I'll get everything uh, cleaned up, get her ready for that final step when I can bring that cool red glow over her cloak, maybe even attach her to the base. We'll see how this goes. All right, there she is after having just about everything highlighted up. I didn't do the silver. I do those final little bits of bright silver on these here links and the edges of the cruddy lantern all right now the fun part <clears throat> paint her eyes red I'll just fill those right in and wherever the light is coming out of this lantern. I'll start pulling some red across her knees. And right in here as well. Highlighting along these folds in the robe, just adding to that texture and all that jazz and we'll lay another coat of pure red down the lantern I'm gonna have to do this in a few passes be I just want it to be nice and saturated nice and bright red light and of course just just a certain amount of glow that will be coming out in all directions from this lamp and we can bend the laws of reality a little bit maybe over embellish the glow slightly it's up to you but I'll just take some some very thin glazes out it's a little bit further in a radius around the lantern and get those little edges those tattered tattered bits of robe that in place let's bring a little bit of orange in the mixture just making a red that's a little bit lighter and brighter and I've already decided on my radius for this lantern so everything after is going to take place inside of it Here, I'll just water it down drop it into into the uh, mesh on this lantern And also bring this color up into her eyes to be real careful. Just a little dab will do. Let's go ahead and just take that further because I want it finished. So bring that a little bit of white in there. Just following a very similar recipe to the uh, video on on the base. You know, following that same progression that I used to highlight those skulls. There we go. Pull out those wrinkles again, just very slight and light lines. Decent. 
Now let's bring some more water into the mixture. And as I add water, it's it's going to thin the paint down. It's not going to pack as much of a punch, but I want to get inside of each one of these uh, little lantern holes. That will probably take a few passes. Um, clean out the brush. Just use like a sponge. I'll pick up some of that excess paint. Hopefully that's dry by the time I move my brush back to it because I want to take some pure red now. And again, just lightly dragging it over so it appears that the interior of the lantern is the brightest area. So over the uh, the cage, just very lightly pulling some red paint. I should uh, highlight these edges as well. Not bad. I can't resist just taking a look at her next to her habitat. Um, before the final highlight, you know, I like to work everything up to a 80, 90 percent level of uh, completion. Then dull things down with a wash. Ahem. I mean, uh, unify. <laughs> Dulling down sometimes. So just a bit of red red ink. Got about 80% water, 20% ink. Very, very small amount. You see how thin it is on my thumbnail there? Just glaze over that whole radius that we established. I'll leave it off the inside of the lantern because I want that area to be brightest. And we'll tap it onto our eyes as well. I don't necessarily want these to be casting an OSL, but or casting any light off of them. But yeah, it'll certainly add to their uh, saturation and visual impact. Now I've brought a little bit of yellow into play. Got just the smallest amount of yellow on my palette. And let's pull some red and yellow ink together make a bright orange and drop that on top of the lantern so the brightest colors are on the inside and that should do let's see how she looks all together and there she is attached um, I want to highlight the stones a little bit more don't quite match the same uh, volume and impact on the figure. Altogether, it's nice. I think maybe these these roots could use a little bit more highlighting as well. Having some thoughts, but yeah, I just wanted to kind of give it one more look over. Maybe you know, punch up a few highlights here and there. But we'll see the end result. Oh, and there she be, spinning like a goddamn diamond on the moon. Love that 360 degree footage. Hope you all enjoyed this video. I had a good time making it. I like making these shorter series. It's a little more uh, compressed and keeps the content fresher. Of course, we're always going to go in different directions to maintain that kind of uh, vitality that variety can bring. Um, but yeah, next time we'll have another topic and we can start this whole cycle all over again. So take care. I love you.